Okay, so good afternoon everybody in this room. Yeah. Hopefully you guys still not sleepy um, at this moment. Uh, we're gonna have a still long journey to learn many things about you know software engineering. So I am Ardito Triangada. I'm currently uh, serving as head of data, big data and analytics in one of biggest bank in Indonesia, Bank Rakyat Indonesia. I would like to uh, present to you guys about one of our piece, piece of work in BRI about how to implement a real-time fraud detection with even trigger processing with Kafka. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, um, just a briefly give you an idea why we pick fraud detection as our important use case uh, to implement. Uh, because we are, as a bank, risk is our heart of our business. The main majority of our risk is on the majority of our Business is in the risk, in the risk itself. Um, there are three uh, uh, types of main risk, credit scoring, fraud detection, and how to assess proper merchant to be our partner uh, in the business. So that's why, why we pick fraud detection as one of our main important things to solve throughout the business. Then we can uh, heavily uh, grow our business even further with all different segments. Okay, um, just give you an idea. Uh, BRI uh, is a bank, right? So there are a couple of things that we need to comply. We cannot just grow, uh, make uh, sophisticated tools from the perspective of IT by ourselves without having to comply with regulation. So how to point? Okay. So this is our main uh, concern on implementing IT excellence in, in the bank company, banking company. We need to comply this regulation from OJK. Uh, one of the main important concern is we, at the moment at least, we cannot um, easily deploy our services on the cloud. Even worse, we cannot deploy geographically outside Indonesia, right? So we need to manage uh, fully our system inside our on-premise system fully managed by yourself. That's the major concern. Okay, next. Let's start talking about the fraud detection itself. You see guys, this is the word real time. So, okay. So, on implementing fraud detection in our organization, we pick three key points as our value propositions on how we can be uh, being a competitive advantage among other competitors in the market. First, uh, our system is accurate. Why it need to be accurate? So we can actually uh, detect the real fraud without having to, um, apa namanya? Resiko banyak yang kita salah detect itu, false positive, false positive banyak. So we should detect as many as possible fraudsters, but we cannot have too many false positives because it will reduce our user experience. That's very important. That's why we need to use machine learning. And secondly, uh, machine learning is usually have some uh, very important problem because machine learning is usually a black box. We cannot actually interpreting what's inside the machine learning formulation itself. If we give to the business users, hey, I, I have this model, and then the business user questioning, okay, wh why this fraud, why this not fraud? So, it's usually between data scientists and business user always, you know, uh, debating so many long, right? So that's why uh, interpretable is our major concern on implementing fraud detection. And also, we need to comply with OJK as well to make it accountable, why we detect some transaction as frauds, why this one not fraud. So that's why uh, we apply one of uh, research results from one of the university in Washington, uh, usually called as LIME package, local, inter local interpretable model agnostic, if I'm not mistaken. So we can actually apply machine learning into fraud detection in our system because it's interpretable or accountable. And the third is the most important on this um, speech topic, it needs to be real time. Why? Because we, we need to detect those fraudsters as soon as possible. 
So uh, user experience will be preserved from our uh, side. So those are three key, full, three key value propositions from our fraud detection. Now let's talk about how we design our solutions into the real architecture to achieve those three key points of fraud detections. First, as previously I talked, it needs to be real-time streaming. Uh, even one second is already a problem, right? Because we need to detect as soon as possible. And, third, and second, we need to enable machine learning in production to get the, accurate, the accuracy and also ability to deploy into the real-time system. And the third point is um, my model in machine learning also utilize some information from the past historical data. Let's say I usually uh, transfer some money to my wife, a certain amount of rupees, but next time, uh, occasionally, surprisingly, there are some single transaction with very huge number of amounts. So it already defined as unusual behavior, right? So my model need to um, involve some historical data in the past. So it needs to look up to the past data with OLTP database. And also the next point is it needs to be uh, able to present it on the dashboard environment or monitoring system. And the next, yeah, usual uh, front-end dashboard applications. So those things uh, implementable in on-premise. We cannot uh, easily use some fancy cloud system products in the market. So that's why we picked this. Next. Okay. So let's talk about how the flow end-to-end in being implemented in our BRI system. First, there is a stream data coming from our middleware or mainframe. Uh, the data is coming streamingly, not, not in batch. So we built a, what is it, a producer system to capture those data. Next, what happened? Because it is a streaming real-time system, as soon as possible, this data coming to Kafka, Kafka will uh, send up the data to anything that I initiated in the beginning. So because I need to have two, um, two systems for the OLL, TP, and the machine learning, so that's why I have two different um, subscribers. And then, after that one, uh, my microservices here need to look up those historical data. That's what happened in the second flow. And next, it will do some real-time analytics fancy works to score the fraud and also to conduct some quick actions. I don't know, maybe notifications to the account officers, notifications to user by SMS, anything lah. And next, send up the result data to Kafka. And next, as soon as possible, data sent in, the, in this point, Kafka will send up again to the OLAP database system. For what? For being um, read by the dashboard applications here. And see this. We will look into what happened in here next in the next few slides. And there are a couple of problems coming after implementing these steps. What's the problems? Uh, there are a couple of um, components that, act, that actually need not to be implemented manually. Um, if we are implementing uh, vanilla Kafka uh, as usual, we need to uh, build those components denoted by red manually by ourselves, making some codes with itself. 
actually, I don't really like making a code. If I, I don't have to make a code, why, sh why bother to make some codes, right? Even worse, um, our organization is not similar as many startups. Uh, we are, uh, our main focus is not making too heavy um, IT codes. Lah. Our, key, our core value is uh, targeting the business, the core business, get the target destinations. So that's why we need to find another way to not um, having many hassle for these components. Then what happened next? Let's do our Kafka in the right way. How? Yeah, we pick um, the web, the, I, I would say the best Kafka wrapper in the market available at the moment, Confluent. So Kafka plus Confluent, yeah, we are very happy, less, less coding. Let's focus to the business only, don't bother to make some codes. Of course, there will be some few codes, but less than usual. Um, it's too light. Okay, so why, why Confluent? Uh, there are some reasons I would like to uh, present here. First, it comes with some Kafka clients. Kafka API, like libraries or frameworks to implement Kafka comments inside the, any programming language. Actually, it is written here, but it's too light. Uh, there are many uh, Confluent clients available from Python, Golang, Java, Node.js, PHP, even .NET. Almost every common language already available in Confluent Kafka clients. Next, Kafka Connect. This is one of my favorite. This is things that makes us in our organization doesn't have to make, write more codes. See, Kafka Connect HTTP, yeah, we can actually get the REST message directly without making some services, web services. Second, edge-based sync. So, every time data coming, okay, it's too long. Every time Kafka getting the data, it will always send through the data to HBase. Automatically, it's nice, right? And also some other things like, sorry, HDFS to lock the data, the historical data, and also GDBC. You can do some CDC or syncing data automatically in real time very easily. So batch is less fashion, old fashioned. <laughs> because streaming is already doable. And the third point is schema registry. It's to make our message to be compressed, less size, and more structured information. Now, I will not stop on there. There will be another even better way to implement Kafka with Confluent. Uh, again, because uh, our organization doesn't really have too many flexibility or, yeah, to hire a lot of bright IT engineers' talents. That's why we pick this solution, enterprise version. Yeah, then we can focus even better on the business value reducing the hard working um, working hours. How? It has easier operations with the support and also fancy GUI based configuration and usage and also the dashboard and you can also monitor your cluster very easily here. Before, before um, implementing this fair enterprise version in Confluent, Everything is done by, you know, console or log. Yeah, our team still can do that, but um, it really um, affect our productivity. Again, we cannot hire a uh, lot of numbers of talents in the organization, so that's why, why don't just pick a best solution out there, 
to make us um, easier to implement these activities with focusing more on the business. That's it. And yeah, finally, uh, just as a showcase on uh, the results so far that we already achieved in our negotiation in detecting fraud in real time. Uh, this is some screenshots uh, showing that it actually detecting real time fraud detection in real time, streamingly. And here you can see uh, every time there are some fraud events, the users or the operators will actually know what's the actual reason the fraud is happening here with using accountable machine learning. I will not talk even more in here because I see the topic is software architecture, but if you are interested, let's talk about it, how to implement the accountable machine learning fraud detection. And here some breaking stuff. Uh, we can detect like more than 90 AUC um, metrics for your machine learning models detection. Um, yeah, using customer behavior pattern. Uh, this is our aspirations even more in the future after having this product. We are going to uh, our aspirations to apply this excellency of the fraud detections to all um, key players in the market. So we try to be a partner, not being a competitor, to those players so we can grow together. Let's build Indonesia for a better future with software engineering <laughs> using this um, fraud detection excellence in BRI. Ah, yeah, I will not stop right there. Actually, uh, there are even more number of use cases that you can apply with those um, streaming platforms with Confluent or Kafka. In my organizations, there are a couple of other examples. First, we implement even triggered microservices for our loan products. So as soon as possible, the loan application is coming, Everything, every process conducted in even triggered in you know stream, no batch, no. And also um, there will be some other applications or the real time monitoring. Let's say I want to monitor in Bank BRI which branches are offline right now. So there will be some time series uh, monitoring. If there is some anomaly, yeah, we can try to contact that branch if it's. There's a problem right there. It's too light here, not seen, it's okay. And also, we also initiated this um, platform as our ETL quote-unquote tools, because ETL is actually regarded as batch. But here, we enable having ETL in real time. As soon as possible, the business user wanna know, hey, I wanna know the campaign results just minutes ago. That's it, you can see it in the, in the dashboard. With what? With Kafka excellence. Do the right way. Yeah. Thanks to Confluent as well. <laughs> um, okay. Terima kasih. Thank you very much.